Hello everyone and welcome to yet another session on Dalit writing. Today we'll discuss module 5. In module 5, you've been prescribed two plays. The first one by A. Shantakumar and the second play by K. A. Gunashekharan. Both are non-detailed study and today we look at both of them in this session. Now let's begin with the first play titled Dream Hunt written by A. Shantakumar. A word about the author. A. Shantakumar is a playwright from Kerala who believes in the power of theatre. According to him, plays are not written, they happen. They are the result of a moment of angst or anger according to him. To him, theatre is a platform to bring forth the truth and politics he believes in. He has quite a few notable works to his credit and was awarded the Kerala Sahitya Academy Award for Drama in 2010 for his work titled Maram Peganu. Most of his works carry a very strong political tone. For instance, Neela Kurukan takes on the theme of corruption and power. Pering Kollan is on Kannur politics. Uriratri Yudakamugi narrated the lives of sex workers. And one interesting aspect about Uriratri Kamuki was the fact that when he staged the performance, he actually had um, people who were involved in sex work donning roles. They played, they performed on stage for that drama. Dream Hunt by A. Shantakumar is written in the backdrop of Teyam, one of the most popular cultural and ritual art form very much popular in the northern part of Kerala. He says, quote, My father was a Tayam performer. What I knew as a young boy was its strong colours and angry rhythm. Quote, quote, unquote. The play is actually a translation of his Malayalam work titled Swapnaveta and Dream Hunt tells the story of a Tayam performer, the conflict between his dream world and the reality. Talking about theatre or the history of theatre in Kerala, Kerala has always had a rich legacy, a rich tradition when it comes to theatre. Ranging from the classical theatrical forms like Kathakali and Kudiyattam to the hugely popular socio-cultural political theatre of KPSC to the present day experimental theatres, Kerala has had a very rich tradition. If V. T. Bhattathiri Pad's Adukale Nana Arangateka, performed in 1929, is considered a milestone in the socio-cultural setup of Kerala, the 1950s saw the rise of KPAC or the Kerala People's Arts Club. KPAC was set up primarily to spread the communist ideology across the state. Topil Bhasi's Ningal and a Communist Aki is only one among many popular contributions by KPSC. The Nataka Kalari movement in 1967, under the guidance of author and playwright Shangaran Pillai and political leader C. N. Srikantan Nair, introduced the significance of studying theatre as an academic discipline. In the 1960s emerged the theatre of roots with Kavalam Narayana Panikar as a major exponent of the theatre. He created Sanskrit plays. Dr. Vaila Vasudevan Pillai is yet another theatrical personality that deserves mention here. Post-2000 theatre, Kerala has seen a lot of experiments in terms of visual language, sound and video projection. For instance, when M.G. Jyotish Sagara Kanyaka was performed on stage, now this was based on Henry Gibson's Lady from the Sea. So when this was staged, it actually used a constantly moving video projection of the sea as a backdrop throughout the play. However, when it comes to Dalit theatre, it did not receive the kind of acceptance like its predecessors. It stood out for the simple reason that, more than entertainment, it aimed at forming a platform where they could bring forth their lives, their troubles, their worries, their despair, its worn-out edges and the remaining parts. It requires courage to speak against caste and its politics, something that's evident even today despite so many years. Not just that, 
they wanted to use theater as a medium to declare that they also have a culture of their own which is in no way inferior to others a shanta kumar whose play we'll be looking at is a significant and powerful playwright in dalit theater another example would be the play titled cherala charitram which talks about dalit christians again based on a novel called kari kota kari another play is titled transformation by vinod v narayanan it explores the atrocities inflicted upon dalits and also how hard they struggle to emancipate themselves by following the ambedkarite philosophy and educating themselves the director who's a dalit opines that how he despite being a cosmopolitan has faced discrimination because he was born a dalit so they continue to fight through various mediums they they resist any sort of oppression now and theater continues to be one of the most powerful mediums of expression now when we come to this play dream hunt that has been prescribed for you to understand it better we need to discuss a little bit about theyam the ritual form of worship that is popular in the northern part of kerala performed by people from dalit community theyam is of various kinds like shri muttappan theyam vishnu murthi theyam guligan theyam kadivanur veeran and many more a ritual that has its roots going back to the stone age this ancient performance has been an area of research for quite a lot of time theyam is noted for its exuberant colors and vibrant rhythm but if we look beyond Theyam is not just the colors and the rhythm it has more within most of the theyam are believed to be the rebirth of those heroes who fought and died in battles in other words they are divine ghosts according to the renowned theater scholar madavur bhasi as mentioned earlier theyam performers belong to the dalit community it's the right given to each community for instance Kadivanur Veeran is performed by the Vannan caste. It's their right to perform that. No other community will perform Kadivanur Veeran. To the social scientist to understand the lived experiences of these performers, the people those people who perform theyam, their local and indigenous history is is really informative and provides information about the culture and the society we are all part of. Theyam was performed in the sacred groves where deities like Kali was worshipped in accordance with the Dravidian tradition. However, this changed with the invasion of the Brahminical or the Savarna system who brought in the idol worship. Having said that, we can see the powerful foundation of the Dalit experiences in the ritual worship of Theyam even today. But as I mentioned before, Theyam is much more than its exuberant colors and rhythm. Theyam is the art form of the oppressed and the marginalized, and their story speaks years of victimization and trauma. With no way to express their troubles, worries, and their despair, they end up as mute victims of their own sufferings. Theyam as a folk ritual gains relevance here. It is a powerful expression of the oppressed. It voices dissent and protest. The play Dream Hunt takes place in the backdrop of Theyam and Guligan Theyam and Kannan Theyam. They become the prominent characters in the play. The play is about the lived experiences of the Dalit, the gruesome poverty and an unfair life that they lead. On the other hand, when they don the role of the theyam they become divine they are worshiped this unbelievable transformation though short lived impacts their lives so much when they become theyam they bless people to lead uh, they they bless people to have a life of dignity and prosperity which they themselves can never imagine having in their own lives because in reality they are immersed in gruesome poverty which they are finding hard to overcome 
So Dream Hunt is a surreal play which talks about the incessant, the, the constant conflict that a Dalit, a Tayyam performer is, is living, is part of the conflict between his dream world and reality. So it talks about the poverty, it talks about the reality of a Dalit, it talks about the life of a Tayyam performer. It talks about all those paradoxes, unbelievable paradoxes in the lives of a Dalit Tayyam performer. That makes it a very, very relevant play of the times. Coming to the second and last play in Module 5, titled Touch by K. A. Gunashekharan. Now, he was a Tamil poet, playwright and Dalit folklorist who was inspired by the left movement and the Marxist ideology. The Mandal Commission of 1979 was established by the then Prime Minister of India, Morarji Deshai, to study the socially and educationally backward classes. With the Mandal Commission coming into the scene, Gunashekharan focused more on the Dalits, their perspectives and theatre. His first play was titled Beli Adugal and it was performed in 1981. He belonged to a backward community and his first play is considered a precursor to Dala theatre in Tamil Nadu. His other major plays include Satya Sottanai or The Experiments with Truth that came out in 1988, Kudumba Valaka or Family Dispute that came out in 2001. He is also a published writer with books on folk arts, modern theatre and history to his credit. The song Manusangada Nanga Manusangada, written by poet Inkulab that embodies a revolutionary spirit, was sung by Gunashekharan and this went on to become the anthem of Dalit movement in 1990s in Tamil Nadu. He started his own theatre troupe that went around the globe of spreading awareness about the social evil of untouchability and the plight of Dalits in India. He was honoured with the Kalai Mamani Award by the government of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry for his incessant efforts. Talking about the Tamil theatre, the origin of Tamil drama can be traced back to the age-old rituals and performances. One of the earliest forms of theatre could be the Terukuta, which was a combination of dance, music, plot, dialogue, acting and costume. With colonization and invention of printing press, Western education influenced Tamil theatre a lot. However, it was under the guidance of Shankarada Swamigal that the modern Tamil theatre took shape. Along with him, Pamalke Sambandha Mudaliyar, Paritima Kalegar are considered the founding fathers of modern Tamil theatre. In the late 1970s, experiments in theatre gained popularity with playwrights like Badal Sirkar and B. V. Karant dominating the scene. In 1977, N. Muthuswami with his Kutu Pattare and Jnani Shankaran's Pariksha street theatre was inaugurated in Tamil Nadu. This was done with an aim to elevate the status of Kutu to that of the traditional theatre. The leftist thinkers were greatly inspired by the street theatre culture and this genre gave way to M. Ramaswamy's Nija Nataka Ayyakam and K. A. Gunashekharan's Tannane. Among them, K. Gunashekharan and his Theatre of the Oppressed stand out for its experiments and theme and therefore his plays continue to be studied even now. Todal is a Tamil play written by K. A. Gunashekharan in 2004, which got translated into English under the title Touch. It was first published in a magazine titled Talith. The play is centered around a few characters. It opens with a woman who symbolizes Mother Earth. She is an all-seer and narrator in the play. When the play begins, the woman appears with a mud pot. There is anguish and despair on her face. She begins the play by saying thus, quote, O my people born to me, 
My mind is now stricken with agony as never before. My people live with no peace of mind. And what progress can one think of when there is no peace of mind? Quote unquote. The reader or the audience is directly introduced to a crucial moment in the play and thus getting their attention. Dalit theatre aspires for an egalitarian platform. There is no room for divinity. It's the human that matters. In the play, the woman, after her soliloquy, takes the center stage and there are four other characters on the stage now. They probably represent the four varnas of the caste system. The four actors are standing in four different directions and we see the woman going to each of them pleading for peace. But they do not move. And the woman is greatly pained by their indifference at her request. She had a mud pot in her hands which she leaves on the stage and leaves the space. The four actors now start quarrelling over something. They start quarrelling over Chilambatam, a very popular form of martial arts in Tamil Nadu. They argue over its ancestry and authenticity when suddenly the first actor asks the others whether anyone would dare to touch the mud pot that is in the middle of the stage. Suddenly a disappointment comes over or every other actor's face and they leave. Now the first actor tells the audience about others' inability to touch the mud pot because the mud pot symbolizes, it's a metaphor for untouchability. And the first actor goes on to tell, he goes on to narrate another story, story of a farmer. A farmer was plowing in his field under the hot sun one day. After some time, due to the incessant heat, he faints and falls down in his own field. Someone passes by then and he sees the fallen farmer. He hesitates for a moment but then decides to go forward and help the farmer. He sprinkles water on the fainted farmer's face and the farmer wakes up and asks for more water and the passerby gives him water. After regaining his consciousness, the, the farmer realizes that he is in someone else's lap. And suddenly he gets up and the first question he asked the passerby, the stranger who helped him, was that, why did you touch me? And it was followed by a torrent of other questions. Are you allowed to touch me? Why did you even touch me? The farmer even goes on to say that he would rather die than being rescued by a lower caste man. He chases the person away who saved him from dying. The play is a stark reminder of the vicious circle called caste system. It unveils the reality that is shocking but true. If a person can ask another man about his caste, even on his deathbed, it speaks volumes about the system that we are all part of. When the play ends, the woman re-enters the stage and she points her finger at the four actors and says, quote, O oh my people, I will rejoice only on the day you unite. Quote, unquote. Thus, the play ends with a plea with a request to the listeners to stay united and work against caste system. Besides, it is also one of the strongest plays ever written against caste system and it is almost a perfect reminder to everybody who reads this play, who watches this play, that how unfair it is to practice caste system or how unfair it is to practice social evils like untouchability among our fellow beings. So these are the two plays, Dream Hunt and Touch, that has been prescribed for a non-detailed study. Um, if you have any doubts, please feel free com uh, to comment and ask your questions when the video is posted. So we'll meet with the last module very, very soon. So thank you so much for listening.